<laughs> so good day, dear listeners. This is Steve Preda with the Management Blueprint Podcast. And today I have with me Gail Dobby and Erin Weir. And uh, welcome, Gail and Erin. Thank you so much for having us. It's a, it's a pleasure. Hey, Steve. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, it's great to have you. So uh, quick introduction. So Gail, uh, Gail and Erin are co-founders of Gail Dobby Coaching and Consulting that helps interior designers build thriving and fulfilling businesses. Prior to founding their current business, Gail founded and ran a luxury interior design firm in Denver, Colorado. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having us. We're excited. It's awesome to have you, uh, uh, have you, have you guys. So uh, let's start with you, Gail. Uh, tell me a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. How did you become an entrepreneur and, uh, you know, and how did you partner up with Erin? Well, I think I would have to say accidentally, I became an entrepreneur. I think I've always had it in my blood. And I'm sure it's like you as well, Steve. But I had been starting to do a little bit of design work for some friends. And they started asking me to come and help them with their homes. And then they would fly me places wherever they were living. And I would start working on their homes. And I'm finally, I came home one day and I said to my husband, you know what? I think I need to get a design de degree. I already had a finance degree and I think I need to go ahead and become an interior designer. So that's how I became um, a designer and started my first business. So, um, and it was some years after that. So I, it was about 92 when I finished my degree in design. And then it was probably, I, I think it was, what year was that, Erin? It was 2005? It was 2021, and we've been together for 16 years. I like to say that I started working for Gail when I was five, so that keeps me like in my early 20s, but that's just a little <laughs> joke that we like to play. <laughs> so yeah. That would be child labor. That's illegal. So let's not go there. Exactly. Um, so so let, I, you know, I picked up on something that you said. So you basically stated matter of factly that just because you started to become an interior designer, you did that ultimately make you an entrepreneur or there is a distinction that not all interior designers are entrepreneurs. Some of them may be technicians. I, I don't know. How, did that, how does that work in your profession? Oh, I love that you asked me that question. I really do because I have this conversation with our designers all the time. And I tell them, you are the CEO of your business and you just happen to be doing design work. And so I came to that realization some years into doing it. And Erin joined me after I'd been running my business for a while. And, you know, that was the realization that I had is that sometimes we're accidental entrepreneurs, as I mentioned at the beginning of the call. And I though had the business background and but I didn't know how to be an entrepreneur they did they do not teach that in design school they do not teach that in business school at least they didn't at that time when I was getting my first degree so um, yeah I think we have to kind of decide that we are going to be business people and then we become good at whatever it is that we happen to be providing in service and after working with Gail for so many years I do think that there is just something that is just she was born with it, right? Like she was born with that entrepreneurial spirit and that um, really big vision thinking. So I, I, I think that that's part of the mold that you came out of, Gail, too. <laughs> <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> okay. So Gail, so you're a visionary. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so for your clients who enroll in your coaching program and who you teach uh, the systems that you have been using, I, I assume, for, for your business, uh, do they have to be visionaries to be successful or is it like a franchise uh, system that they can basically run with it and even if they are not uh, a pure entrepreneur, just by following, following the right recipe, they can get there? That is an excellent question too. And I also realize that most people are not thinking like entrepreneurs when they come to us. And so through time, we teach them how to be that. And we teach them how to run their businesses. And for most of them, because they are creatives, they tend to be on the visionary side. Not always as much as maybe I am. I'm like a 98 on a scale of 100 on being a visionary. And um, But each person has a certain amount of that because I don't think you can do it without it. 
So uh, you can teach a certain amount of how to run a business and structure. There has to be a little bit of natural ability toward being a visionary as well. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, there are a lot more visionaries than there are what you call integrators, people who can really manage a business mm -hmm. and have the discipline to hold people accountable and to coach people up. Uh, Erin, I'd like to ask you, what is, where do you come from? Do you feel like you're a visionary entrepreneur or you're more of an operator um, or you're both? What are you? So I am the integrator for our company. And um, that is something that I'm, I have found over the years is just very naturally a natural gift of mine. Um, I love people. I love working with our team. And for the longest time before we really kind of had those names of visionary and integrator, um, what I would say to people, in, even in our design business, is I would really, I always want to take Gail's visions and, and dreams and really make them come to life. And I realized very quickly as we got more into, um, into EOS and rocket fuel and all of that, um, that really I am the integrator for our business. And it, it's a... Uh, it's a, a, a good yin and yang for us as far as our business and, and how that works. And I think that I'm beginning to see, I definitely have visions too for the business. So Gail and I do a lot of strategy on our 10 year vision together because um, we are building the business together um, for the future of the business. And so I think that there is probably more integrator in me, but I definitely see some visionary spirits starting to come out. And I just can't help but have a uh, vision when I hang out with this, this <laughs> gal all the time. <laughs> I've stopped saying, okay, wait a minute. Um, wait, what are you talking about? Are you talking about in like five years? And I, I get really excited about it now because I used to get really like a very short time frame in my mind of what I was thinking. And now um, there's just so many moving parts and projects and, um, you know, a team that we've built that I've got to keep chiming along. So um, I owe it to the business to be really thinking about the, the long-term vision of it. Yeah, that, that's, that's right. It's, you can grow into it. It's actually easier to grow into that part than the integrator part. So, uh, so you started the business or, or Gail, you founded the business and then Erin, you joined and, and you kind of build it up and then you figure out that maybe this is something that you could teach others uh, and help them be successful. So when did this idea of design university uh, come about and how did you make the transition? Well, interestingly, Erin and I had been working together since 2005 in my design business. And she started with me as an intern uh, and so she, over the years, has learned and grown, and now she's co-founder of this company and vice president. And what I've seen happen over the years is she just has this natural affinity for organization and, and managing people and leading people. So about 2007, she was getting married. She wanted to have kids. Um, I was burned out from what we were doing. We were doing lots of remodels. And I just said, why don't we find a way to use our talents and let's create a business that will actually work for us, that will meet your needs and meet my needs. And so 2007, we started talking about it. And March 8th, 2008, we started DSU. And that was our first iteration of the company before we became Gail Dobie Coaching and Consulting in 2014. So we started more as an educational business. And then we transformed into more of a consulting and coaching business in 2014 well, actually about 2010, officially in 2014, we started that new brand. And I think that we were just really thinking about, you know, what, what kind of shortcuts what can we provide from what Gail has learned in her interior design business, what we've learned from working together. And then Gail also has a finance degree. And so how can we take that combination and just really help our industry, help up level, up level our industry and, and help people? So what was the point when you actually felt like you you were really onto something then when uh, you know when you felt like it could be a sustainable business that could actually replace uh, some or most of your income from the actual interior design business <laughs> that's, that's a good question too and uh, a little bit of a painful journey so uh, I'm sure you and the listeners will remember that 2008 in October was when the market crashed well, that was our first month of revenue, and we did $86,000 of revenue that month by doing an event that was a, it was unheard of at that time. It was a three-day telesummit, 
and we had 14 speakers and we did it using teleseminars. So we had no Zoom wow. calls. <laughs> and <laughs> oh God, that feels so old. Uh. <laughs> Oh my God. And it was, uh, so we had almost 300 people on there. $86,000 of revenue is pretty darn good for 2008, especially for your first month of revenue. It's so amazing. that we thought we were on the right track. And then when the whole market crashed around us, then it was another three to four years before we really got our sea legs back and we almost failed. And I, I have to be really honest about it because it was really a tough time. We didn't know if we'd make it. And it was a very tough business to switch from interior design to something that's very digital. And we had to learn a whole new language and a, no, a new type of business to operate. So um, <laughs> it, was a, it was a roller coaster journey. And from time to time, it still is. Yeah. And the telesummit really was our first attempt at building a list, right? We knew we, we had taken some classes. We knew we needed a list. If we wanted to sell to designer or to other interior designers, we only had, you know, our friends that we knew of. So we needed to start building an email list and that telesummit helped us begin that we partnered with someone that had a list already. Um, and she was part of the event as well. And so that was a great partnership to begin everything. Um, and then we started with, um, trying to do a, a monthly membership program, just a really low cost membership program. Um, and I believe we were charging like $37 a month at that time. And that in itself was just a big deal, right? Like it was content monthly. Um, it was delivery, it was client service, and it was still just the two of us. So just figuring out the marketing for that, the delivery, and then, um, also whatever, problems could arise. We were just kind of working through all of those things all in the midst of finally having a list and also, you know, the economy tanking at the same time. So it was, it was interesting, but, you know, we always have been able to really, um, stay positive together and really continue to just kind of work through it and move through what we're, we're dealing with. And I'm so glad that we did. I'm so glad we didn't throw in the towel because it, our, our work uh, on a daily basis is so rewarding and who we're working with, um, not only just our team members, but our clients right now and, and really getting to see the difference we're making in people's lives. Yeah, I, I, bet, uh, I bet it's very rewarding. So uh, I'm really curious about how you constructed your program. Did you model it on another coaching program and, and just took it into the niche or was it like completely the grounds up uh, this is what worked for, for you, Gail and Erin, and you basically just uh, use your own best practices and that started teaching it. Well, that's another great question. You have a <laughs> lot of great ones, Steve. <laughs> so what can you I say? Get five stars from you. Uh, <laughs> you well, I've, I've had a few mentors along the way that I've followed. And one of them said, you create the program and sell it before you actually build it. And I love that concept. And that's how we really got into the higher level programs that we were doing. So when I started developing a coaching program, I actually created, I, I did a survey and I asked our clients, what is it you really need? And so I took that information and I created a framework for a, a program, which at that time was six months. And so I put together the modules and I said, this is what they're going to be. This is what the cost is gonna be. I think it was about $2,500 at that time for a six month program. And we got 12 people to sign up. And so we built it as we went. So yep. And we, that is something that I learned is I was like, wait a minute, we're going to start selling something that we haven't completely built yet. And goes like, well, let's just at least see if this is exactly what they want and we'll just build it as we go. And that was a big um, learning curve for us because in my mind, I was like, wait a minute, we got to do this straight A's. Like we got to have it all done and in the bag before we sell it. And that has really helped streamline our learning and what we're offering people is, is coming up with the idea based on their feedback and then starting to just develop it once we've sold it. And now we just improve on it by, they'll tell us what their problem is and I'll create a new tool for it. So that's something that I do and it's just a natural tendency of, of being the problem solver that I am. And so for me, that's the key is just, uh, it's constant creativity. It's constantly solving problems and finding out what our clients need and then building what they need. And of course I have, uh, for our company, for the two of us, we've probably invested at least 400,000 in classes and programs over the years to educate ourselves. We operate on EOS, which we highly recommend for any company that is of the right size which is usually around 2 million or about eight people. 
And I am, I'm just a real avid learner. So to me, it's all about taking what I can learn from all the other experts out there and collecting it in the right format and learning how to teach it to people who are very visual. So that's kind of how we've gotten to where we are right now. I really love this concept of, uh, of uh, following the need with a tool. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you have a system that is carved in stone you are mm -hmm. uh, keeping your ear to the ground and listening to your, your, your members. And if they have a problem that you haven't addressed it, okay, what is the tool that you could construct to, uh, to help them with? This is, this is awesome. Actually, this is different from EOS because EOS have been carved in stone for the last 15 years, right? And, <laughs> yeah. and it, uh, it's a complete tool set. There's no need to improve it. Um, I'm saying tongue in cheek. So, uh, uh, so that's, uh, that's uh, fascinating. So what is special about interior designers? Uh, how are they uh, different and how are their needs different? Or is it just the same as any other business? No, it's not. <laughs> A and, whole and we, nother animal. Yeah, it is another animal. And it's not, it, it's not meant to be in any way negative at all because creative people think differently. And I happen to have both sides of the brain. Erin has both sides of the brain. Creatives like designers as a rule are very right brain. And so for us to teach them how to run an effective business, we have to help them understand that they need that left brain to operate and that they can learn it. And they don't necessarily believe they can learn it and they're scared of numbers and they're scared of spreadsheets. And my goal is to always get them over that and have the light bulbs go off and then they will learn it and they will become great business people. And we've watched our, our clients go from you know, 200,000 to 4 million in seven years. We've seen people double their business in a year. We had one person that came up to me at market last week and said, we were a million last year. We're gonna be at $2 million this year. And, and it's because they, we have figured out a way to talk to creatives in such a way that they can apply it and just start doing it. And then I keep teaching the finances and eventually it'll sink in, <laughs> you know? It's just a, it's a daily process of learning how to teach something that is not easy for that right brain creative mind. Right. Well, and you know, not all interior designers have gone to design school. Some just have a, that God-given talent of design and that creativity. But for those of us that have gone through design school, um, we have not gotten very many business classes offered in our courses. So Gail, you should tell that story about, um, about your teacher, what she was asking you in class one day. <laughs> this, this is in design school. It was probably 92. And uh, she, it was our one business class that we had. And she turns to me in the class and she knows I'm a student and that I'm also practicing at that moment. And she said to me, do you know how to do this sales tax? And I said, yes. And so I ended up having to teach the students and the teacher in class how to do the sales tax. And um, I, it, it wasn't too long after that, that the head of the department said, would you be interested in teaching that business class? And I said, well, thank you, but th no, thank you. Yeah, because it was, I think at that time they were offering $33 per class hour, not including drive time and your preparation or class time or tests or anything. And I said, I think not. Thank you, though. I appreciate that. And so here you go. Here's the answer. We ended up starting our own business and developing our own tools and programs and classes. And here we are 13 and a half year, years later. And I think we've got the best programs out there in the industry to help people grow and scale their businesses and learn about business. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. So uh, do you only have interior designers uh, enrolled or it's also open for other industries, other, other industries that have uh, the similar issues of maybe people are being uh, creative and doesn't, don't have affinity and some kind of uh, craftsman type business? Mm -hmm. That's, that's also a wonderful question to ask. And we help many industries, lighting designers, landscape designers, architects. Um, I've helped CPAs and bookkeepers as well, salespeople. So it's really about oh. teaching the business principles in a way that makes sense to people. And it's very streamlined so that you can um, actually take our materials that we usually teach over a three-day period and in three days, they have a complete plan 
for how they're going to go and build their business and a three-year model, financial model for how they're going to make money at the business. And that's something that we do with all of our clients. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in. Everybody needs that. Yeah. So we actually, you know, we started with interior designers because that was a natural fit for us of the industry that we were coming from. Um, but this recently this year, Gail even wrote up her first book, um, create, well, it's not your first book. It feels like your first book because it's so <laughs> yeah. recent and it's such, so like a daily task right now, just, uh, keeping up with all the book items, but, um, she created a book called, um, your creative value blueprint, um, to help creatives get paid what they're worth. I think that I may have the tagline a little <laughs> unedited, but you know, she's out oh, there. We go. We finally got print versions in the mail this last week. We're really excited about that. Um, but you know, our hope is that that is a book that can really help a lot of the creative entrepreneurs and, and, and also extend us into meeting more creative entrepreneurs um, in their business path. That's awesome. Um, and how, what is the uh, program? What does the program look like? So they come in, you teach them how to read the balance sheet, how to create the business plan, and, and uh, you know, what are the basics? But is, is that it or it's more of a longer term uh, program? And what does it take for an interior designer who is complete rookie? Maybe they have a practice, maybe they make two, three hundred thousand dollars to go from there to having a real business with maybe with employees and mm -hmm. and systems and all that stuff. What, what, what is the the proven process for you? Oh, yeah. Well, and, and you have to have a proven process. And we do have a proven process. We have spent years. We have a 150 page manual that uh, I developed over time, and we literally just reviewed it and re revised it again because we're constantly improving. And so we have a process that we teach. And it's something that other team members can teach as well, which is really great. But we take people from the 10 year vision, which is very similar to EOS. And then we walk them through everything from their, their values, their vision, uh, their why, and we help them figure out their culture for their business. And then we teach them how to manage their time. We teach them how to read financial statements, the balance sheet and the P&L. And we teach them about cash flow statements and we teach them about how to hire and how to, how to manage their client processes. Systems and processes are a big part of it. And then I'm going to say something that's going to be probably a surprise to you. And then I'm not a big fan of business plans. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I tell people, I would rather not have you have a business plan. I would rather have you have a financial model so that you know what you need to be doing every single day to achieve your goals. And uh, they can operate on the EOS system and some of the things we do, like having rocks and to-do lists and things like that. But in the end, if you know what your financial goals are and how to achieve those, that is more important to me than having a business plan. I hear you. I hear you. And, uh, you know, there is this uh, school of thought that from planning, uh, the middle is gone and it's all about having a vision, a long-term vision. I call it the pinnacle. And then you have the quarterly rocks, which is what are you going to do this quarter to move towards your vision? And what's between the pinnacle and your quarterly is less important, right? Exactly. Because if you know where you're going and you're going to do your climb, the discipline, the 90 days, then you can figure out what's the next climb going to be. And, and uh, you just hit your metrics and you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would just share that as we went through the process of, you know, Gail's always been a visionary. She's always been thinking like way ahead. I always give her a joke, like, are you thinking about 2031 right now? Like, wh where are you at? What time frame are you in? Anyways. Um, but you know, I think that process that Gail's always involved me in, um, but there was something about our time and getting set up in EOS that really, I just felt so included in creating that vision. It wasn't, it wasn't just based on what Gail wanted. It was also what I wanted and what our leadership team wanted. And just that buy-in in itself of all of us being in line and really what we're looking for. And it's not just Gail, the owner setting the, um, setting that vision. That was really powerful. And I loved the idea of like that bigger vision and then working backwards. Um, so looking at that three-year target, looking at what we need to do for the year and then breaking that out by quarter. And for some reason in, in my brain that just clicked and, um, it, it has really helped, um, stay excited about, you know, even if we, 
have some things that aren't working or we have some issues that arise, just really kind of coming back to that bigger vision and staying excited and focused on that. Okay. So you obviously use EOS and that, that's part of your, was part of your thinking perhaps to create mm -hmm. your own model. What are the EOS is one of those management blueprints I always talk about, you know, scaling mm -hmm. up the EVs, uh, four disciplines of executions, three headway, three headway and, and many others. Uh, what other frameworks, uh, management blueprints, whatever you want to call it, inspired you to put together your system? So did you have some other things that you uh, learned a lot from and, and got ideas from? Well, I'm a reader. I'm a huge reader. So I read everything I can get my hands on. And I can't say that I take one other system as much as I do EOS. Um, there are so many good things that are out there, and I just pick the pieces from each of those that I think will meld well into a program that is followable and doable for our clients. And if they will follow that, they will get the results because we know that based on our experience, this is what works. And we also tweak what we learn from our clients and put, keep putting it back in. So we keep remixing the batch until we get better and better at what we do. And every book I read is um, part of my thinking process and also what I bring into maybe our monthly coaching and individual coaching is I will take some of the concepts that I've learned and I will help, I will take that and add that into the mix because that's what keeps it fresh and interesting and I think current. Yeah, and I would also share that, you know, we're problem solvers. We're solving problems every single day, whether it's for our business or for our clients. And Gail and I are really good about taking a moment to reflect on what we've learned. So even when we're going through one, you know, some, a really hard conversation or a really hard thing, we're like, what can we learn from this? What can we learn and put that, that back into our tricks? And so just those experiences of going through hard things and fun things together and those experiences, we're always weaving um, those storylines into our communication with our clients and through our VIP experiences. Because just as much as we grow, our clients can grow with us from what we're learning as well. Wonderful. Well, very exciting. It's, uh, they say the, the riches are in the niches. <laughs> <laughs> and you definitely found a great niche. And I love uh, that you have this open-ended architecture. Uh, so it's not like your card is stone. You keep adding tools and you're listening to your, your uh, members and uh, you're, you're flexible and, and empathetic, which is great. Uh, so, so if um, our listeners would like to learn more about your program, more about you, connect with you, where can they find you? Well, they can find us on our website at gaildoby.com. So that's G-A-I-L-D-O-B-Y.com. And also we're over on Instagram, uh, gail.doby. Um, and you can find out about Gail's book on our homepage there. Um, it's listed on Kindle. It's listed on Amazon. And uh, yeah, we also have a, a podcast on iTunes called Creative Genius Podcast. And so we'd love for people to follow us along there as well. Okay, well, lots of goodies uh, to check out. So your book title is Breakthrough. Um, what's the full title? <laughs> She's hold it up. <laughs> it's business, business Breakthroughs. Business Breakthrough, your creative value blueprint to get paid what you're worth. Oh, that's wonderful. And it's already out on Amazon? It's out on Amazon and it is now, uh, people are buying it on paperback too. So it is uh, going out that way. That's awesome. Well, uh, definitely check it out. Uh, it's, uh, I'm going to check it out and, and read it as well because um, I'm looking for new tools and maybe, maybe Gail, you shared some secrets that I can uh, steal from you. No, maybe. <laughs> I love some of your tools too. I can't wait to interview you for our podcast. I actually have, you're going to like this. Hang on two seconds. <laughs> I have this printed out and sitting on my table. All and right. It is talking about what my equity target needs to be for the business. How well, about very that? Very good. Very good. <laughs> well, okay. We'll talk about it later. Okay. So good. anyway, so thanks very much for coming to the show. You've been awesome. Um, Dear listeners, uh, please, uh, if you enjoyed this show, please uh, rate and review us on Apple Podcast and uh, subscribe, obviously, and stay tuned for next week. We'll try to, uh, you, you ladies have set the bar very high, but we'll try to find someone who is comparably exciting to you 
uh, on the next <laughs> next show. Kind. Thank you so much, Steve. It was our pleasure. Thanks, Steve. Thanks.